everybody. This is our first ever Badger and Catholic Facebook Live Office Hours, and we're so excited to be here today. I am Maggie, and I am a junior studying nursing, and my position on Badger Catholic is I am the service team leader, so I'm planning all the local service events for us. Um, and I'm Emily. I'm a sophomore studying music education, and I am the peer mentor team leader, uh, which basically means I handle formation for the staff, um, do formation events through Badger Catholic, and um, help people um, do one-on-one -on -one ment mentoring for, um, for faith formation and things like that. Hey guys, I'm Vero. Uh, I'm the marketing team leader. Uh, if you guys want to buy this shirt, you can go to shopbyjacatholic.com and let's get started. <laughs> um, okay, so first we're going to introduce um, the Badger Catholic organization. Um, so Badger Catholic is a student org on campus um, and we provide spiritual resources and services for all Badgers regardless of faith. Um, we do service events like Maggie said, one-on-one mm -hmm. um, -on -one guidance in the faith, um, group activities like the paint night we had last night. Um, so yeah, it was really fun. <laughs> um, Ignite, which is a platform where we give weekly talks about different topics. Um, this upcoming week, we'll have our Vice Pre President George talking about some cool things. Um, we also have guest speakers like Kevin Muiko, um, which is coming up later in the semester. And we're also hosting an Our Lady of Guadalupe event at the end of the semester, and we'll keep you guys posted on details about that. And we also want to let you know that we are still hiring. So if you're interested in being more involved with Badger Catholic, we would love to have you. We're hiring for Ignite team members as well as an executive secretary. And before we get started, if anyone on here has any questions, you can leave them in the chat and we'll be sure to answer them now or at the end of the meeting. Um, so the questions we're addressing today are about last week's Ignite, um, where Father Luke from uh, St. Paul's gave a talk about an overview of Catholicism. Um, and he talked about three different subtopics, a personal God, authority in the church, and vocations. So we came up with a couple questions just to get the conversation going about the topics he discussed. So first off, the first question we thought of was why is God a personal God and not just a spiritual being? How do we know he is intimately involved in our lives? Um, okay, so according to Father Luke's talk on Wednesday, um, he talks about how the Catechism of the Catholic Church states that God wishes to approach man only through man. Um, so basically what this means, he gives us a lot of evidence in the Bible and other historical texts um, where he says that his name is I Am. So he's giving himself a name here. He gives his name for a reason so we can identify him and give him that personality. Um, and then he made us in his own image and likeness, so he wants us to be um, fully in communion with him. Like he made us, he crafted every single one of us, and that's how he wants us to be intimate with him. Um, and he has a face, as Father Luke said. He wants us to know it. Since he made us in his own image and likeness, we can assume that. And he has an image that he wants us to seek out. Um, and then also, he sent his son to directly mingle in our lives through the person of Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ is a historical person, and he came down and made himself flesh to be with us. Um, he inserted himself into our history. He was intimately involved in the lives of the apostles, um, things like that. Anything else to add, Maggie? Nope. You want to ask the next question? Sure. Okay. So the next question is about the Trinity. Um, if the God is a personal God, why do we need Jesus and the Holy Spirit? Okay. So God did not create these things. God is these things. The Father is God, the Son is God, and the Holy Spirit is God. But we have to remember that the Father is not the Son. One God in three distinct persons, and each person is God. And he created this for us, for resources for us, because he is personal. Um, so those are our questions about personal God. Um, again, if you have any questions about that very first subtopic, make sure to leave it in the comments and we will answer it. Okay, so our next subtopic was about the authority in the church. Um, so what are our questions about that, Maggie? Yeah, so first of all, let's figure this out. What is authority? Um, so authority is the church leaders that interpret scripture and tradition. Um, they're called the magisterium. Um, and this was made because the early church had to decide things that Jesus never spoke about. Father Luke in his talk um, explained that the early church had to decide if the Gentiles had to be circumcised. Um, Jesus did not talk specifically about this while he was on earth, 
um, and they needed to figure out a way to make that decision um, and put it into the tradition of the church. Um, so they created the magisterium, which interprets these things and tries to make sure that the law is directly according to God's will. Um, this does not mean that God is not involved with its decisions. Um, the Holy Spirit guides them. Um, and as Father Luke said, revelation was complete with Jesus, but sometimes it isn't in an explicit form, which we humans need. Um, so again, the magisterium was created to have that explicit reasoning. Um, and then again, Jesus said to the apostles, he who hears you, hears me. Jesus gave them the authority so the church can continue on. So again, Jesus instigated the magisterium so we could answer those questions that he didn't explicitly answer. So that leads into the next question. Who gets to decide who authority is in the church? Um, again, like I said before, Jesus directly told the apostles, um, he who hears you, hears me. So Jesus was the one that directly created the magisterium. Um, and then Jesus again explains multiple times in the Bible that the apostles are to keep his church alive. Um, another example of this besides he who hears you is also when he gives Peter the keys to the kingdom and he says, whatever you loose in heaven will be loosed on earth. Um, that kind of thing. So his disciples are the people he gave that authority to, and then the apostle line is directly descended to the people we have today. Um, so Peter is a direct descendant of today's Pope, Pope Francis, um, things like that. Again, the Holy Spirit decides directly um, who the Pope is and things like that. He's calling people to be priests and bishops and things like that. Um, so he's directly involved in that decision as well. And why do we need this? So the Magisterium keeps the faith uniform in her beliefs. Um, through prayer, research of scripture and history, and with the intervention of the Holy Spirit, um, we're able to verify exactly how Jesus wanted to be worshipped. Awesome. So this brings us to the next topic. He also spoke about vocations. So what a vocation is, is it's a call from God of how you should live out your life, whether it's married, single, or priesthood, or religious life. Yeah, so going along with that too, every baptized person is called to a vocation that will lead them to grow in holiness. Um, and this is going to lead them on earth to eternal happiness, hopefully in heaven. Um, so surrendering to God in prayer daily um, can help you be confident in your decision about which vocation is for you. Um, and your vocation is so that you can have love and joy and obedience to God. Um, vocations are personal gifts from God and it will perfectly fit you to be um, either as happy as you can on earth, but definitely as happy as you can in heaven. Um, so another question is, why do we need a vocation? Like, why is it important? Right. So a vocation is there so that we can fulfill God's plan and enter the sacraments and also experience sacrificial love. Um, each vocation requires a sacrifice to die to yourself for the service of others. In serving others, we have the opportunity to become more like Christ every day and share God's love with others. Vocations are initially leading us to heaven. Um, and then our last question on this topic is, what happens if you choose wrong? So remember that the ultimate destination is heaven. God will always make sure that you're on the path to heaven. If you decide to go a different way than originally intended, he will make sure that you find the way. Vocational discernment is also a lifelong process so through every prayer, struggle, and success we have, that's initially leading us closer to our vocation. Um, yeah, so those are all the questions that we had. Again, if you guys have any other questions, make sure to leave them in the comments and we will answer them for you. Um, but while you're doing that, we also are going to talk about some upcoming BC events. So first of all, our service events, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we host service for the English Conversation Time, and it's just a time for, to reach out for people who just moved to Madison and are having trouble or just want to better learn the language and the traditions and customs around here. So it's taking place on Zoom, so you can do it from your home. So be sure to look on our calendar on badgercatholic.org and you'll find all about the service events and how to sign up. Yeah, just a plug for that one, guys. It is so much fun. I went on Friday yes. and it was so great. We were like talking about the election. Um, this guy did this like hour-long presentation of how to dress up for the winter and it was such yeah. a good time. People there are so nice. It's, it's like so really rewarding chill. too. They're very yeah. thankful. It's a really great time. Um, and then moving on for tabling on Facebook, the thing we're doing right here right now, 
um, will be on Mondays at 3.30. So this is the special time where we're doing it at 5. Um, all the rest of the weeks will be at 3.30 p.m. and you can catch us on Facebook Live. And if you aren't able to be there at 3.30, it will be posted on our website or on our Facebook, I mean, so you can always go back to it and reference it that way. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then, like Bill said at the beginning of the video, um, Badger Catholic merch is super, super great, you guys. <laughs> um, you can find it on the Shop Badger Catholic site. Um, it's really great. They're so cute. All of the um, designs were made by people in Badger Catholic, like yes. the actual staffers, so they're really cute. You should check it out. And also, so our events, just to like get you thinking about the events we have in the future, we're planning to do an Ignite, which is a Wednesday night event where we're going to tour the Sistine Chapel together and have a fun night just learning more about that. It'll be great. And we also have an Ignite this week. And as we said, our Vice President George will be the speaker, so that will be an awesome time. And look out for our future Ignites. We will be posting and advertising the speaker or the event we will be doing. Yeah, and again, just to reiterate, we also have a guest speaker, um, and we're going to be doing an Our Lady of Guadalupe event, and I heard there might be food there, so watch out for that too. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you guys for listening. We hope you have a wonderful Monday, mm -hmm. and we hope you come back next week. Yeah, thanks guys.